Here we go! It's time for Maths with Daddy. That's right. Thank you, Ben. Chapter 4, lesson number 3. Once again, we are sticking with multipliers, but this time we are looking at compound interest. So, what is compound interest, I hear you ask? What does compound interest? Good question. So, as a reward for saving your money with them, banks pay out interest each year to their customers. They give you free money. This interest is a small percentage of the amount of money you've saved with them. Different banks offer different percentage rates. You may go to one bank and they'll give you 3%. You may go to another bank and they give you 3.5%. So you obviously go to the one with the 3.5%. You can shop around for the best deals. Obviously, the more money you have, the more interest you earn. If you're a multi-millionaire, well, you can just live off the interest because if you get 3% of your millions every single year, that's definitely enough to live on. So, the more money you have, the more interest you earn. What is compound interest, though? Well, compound interest is when at the end of the year or the end of the month, it changes for different banks. When they give you that interest, what happens is they pay it back into the account. So, the amount of money in your account keeps on increasing. So that interest that you receive is reinvested. One way of working out how much money will be in your account after so many years is to use multipliers. However, this only works if you do not add any money to the amount of money in your account or take any money from it. So if you just open up a random bank account and put in, for example, a thousand pounds, you could work out how much is there after five years, assuming you do not touch it, by using multipliers. So don't add anything else in, don't take anything else out. This is the exact same formula as the last lesson. However, all of the questions are to do with compound interest. Let's go with an example. So example eight on multipliers. The first seven examples have been in the previous two multiplier lessons. So Katrina invested 6,000 pounds in a bank account with a 2.8% annual interest rate. Ooh, I like that. How much money will be in her account after four years, and then part B, calculate just the compound interest. So, we are wanting to work out how much money is going to be in her account, and we can see that the interest rate is 2.8%, which means for that first year, she'll get 2.8% of the 6,000. Year two is gonna be the 2.8% of whoever money will be in her account after that first year. And then for the following year, again, it's 2.8% of that, so it's gonna keep increasing. And the quick way of working it out is to use multipliers. So, the multiplier, we always start at 100, we add or take away our percentage and then divide by 100. For all of these interest rates though, well the banks are giving you free money, so you're going to be adding the percentage on. So, with this one, we start at 100, we add on the 2.8 and then divide by 100. So 100 add 2.8, Katrina, is 102.8. Good. And then you divide by 100. You do indeed. Which gives you 1.028. Well done, Katrina. What do you then do with the multiplier? Well, you do the 1.028 to the power of 4 because it's 4 years. <laughs> Katrina, you are perfectly right. Yes, it is an annual interest rate, so each year you're getting the 2.8%. So, first year, 2.8%. Second year, 2.8%. Third year, 2.8%. Fourth year, 2.8%. So it's the 2.8%. It's the multiplier to the power of a four. You then multiply that by the original amount. It says she invested 6,000 pounds, so we multiply that by the 6,000. Which means then the amount in Katrina's account is 6,700 pounds and 75 pence. Again, remember money has two decimal places, so round your answer when it's money to two decimal places. Katrina, are you happy with that? Yes, very much so, thank you. You're very welcome. However, the question is then saying, well, work out the compound interest. Surely this is the compound interest. No, 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 that's the amount of money in the account. You are perfectly right, well done, Neil. So, to work out just the interest that you have received, the free money that the banks gave you, just now you were sitting there with that 6,700 pounds and 75 pence, but take away the amount of money that you started with. That was the 6,000 that you put in, meaning there has been an increase of 700 pounds and 75 pence. 
So you can finish that off with a nice little sentence that says, <clears throat> This means that Katrina has gained £700 and 75 pence in interest. Woo! Well done, Katrina. Example 9. Neil invested £2,300 at a rate of 3.9% per annum. Adam, 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 adam. What does per annum mean? It means per year. Part A. How much money will be in his account after five years? And part B. Calculate the compound interest. So once again, it's 3.9% per annum per year. So if we're wanting to work out the value after five years, we can use multipliers. For our multiplier, once again, we start at 100. We add or take away our percentage and then divide by 100. What would you do with this one? Trophy. Brilliant, Trophy. You are perfectly right. We start at 100. We add on the 3.9 and then we divide by 100. That gives you 103.9. If you divide that by 100, either move the decimal back two places or move the digits two places to the right and you will get 1.039. We are wanting to work out how much money though is going to be in Neil's account, assuming he just abandons it for that five years. And if he does, the amount in the account will be the multiplier, 1.039. RP, what would you then do? Good, you do that to the power of five. Awesome. Naima, what do you then do? Good, you multiply that by the £2,300 that Neil put into the account. Work that out in the calculator. And you get £2,784.87. Pence. Once again, money has two decimal places, so we're giving our answer to two decimal places. Part B, once again, is saying, what is the compound interest? So it's not interested in how much money is in the account. It's interested in this free money that Neil has been given for using this specific bank and this account. So you take the amount of money that's in the account at the end of the five years and take away that initial investment of the 2,300. What it means is in five years, Neil has been given 484 pounds and 87 pence worth of free money. Woo! So, as I just said, Neil has gained 484 pounds and 87 pence in interest. Example 10, a bank offers interest at a rate of 4.1% for the first year, followed by a rate of 3% per annum thereafter. Calculate the compound interest on an investment of £20,000 over seven years. So you can see for this one that for the first year, the interest rate is 4.1%, but after that, it drops down to 3%. So year one will be 4.1%, but year two is 3%. Year 3 is 3%, year 4 is 3%, all the way up to those 7 years. So, because it's different for the first year, we have to just work out year 1 separately. We can, once again, use multipliers because it is a percentage increase. The amount of money in the account is 20000 but after a year, you'll have added 4.1% to that. So, the multiplier, you start at 100, you add on the percentage and divide by 100. So, 100 add on the 4.1, divide by 100, gives you 104.1. Divide that by 100 and you get 1.041. To work out the amount in the account after one year, we'll take your multiplier, do that to the power of the number of years. Well, because it's just one year, you don't actually have to put anything. You can if you want to, it's the power of one, but it just means you've got 1.041. That's it. That's the multiplier. It's just like the very first lesson of multipliers when there was no power there. Then you multiply that by the investment of 20,000 pounds. Key it into the calculator and you end up getting £20,820. So that is how much is in the account after one year. Now what we need to do is we need to consider the other years. What you could always do is you could work out for year two, 3% of that and add it on. Then for year three, work out 3% of that new amount and add that on. And then for year four, work out 3% of that new amount and add it on. But that would take you until Christmas. So the quicker way of doing it is to use multipliers. And if you consider years two to seven, well, that is six years. There's year two, three, four, five, six, and seven, six years. So once again, you use your multiplier because it's going to be increasing by 3% for so many years. 
So it's 100, add or take away the percentage, divide by 100. So it's 100, add on 3 this time, because we're now looking at this interest rate for the following years. So it's 100, add 3, which is 103. Divide that by 100, and you get 1.03. To work out then the amount in the account, well, that's going to be the multiplier. It's the 1.03 to the power of 6, because it's the 6 years that we are interested in. It's years 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. We then have to multiply that by the original amount, but the original amount will be this new value because what we're doing is we're working out year two. So this is where we start. That's the amount of money that's in the account after year one. So we have to then start from this amount. We're adding on for year two to this amount. So we multiply it by the 20,820. If you work that out, you end up getting... £24,860.17 to two decimal places. Is that the final answer? Well, no, it's not, because it doesn't say how much money is going to be in the account. It says, what is the compound interest? So to work out the compound interest, take that amount of money that's in the account after seven years and take away their initial investment of 20000 and if you do that, if you key that into the calculator, you end up getting £4,860.17, which is the amount of free money the bank will have given you across those seven years. Woo! I love free money! Give these questions in the Lecky and Lecky National 5 book a shot. It's page 33, exercise 31C. Any problems? Let me know. Have fun! See ya. Good luck. Woo! I love multipliers. Yeah, boy.